Yeah, well, you'll read here in the whole sequence of Jesus dealing with the twelve. The twelve get hardly no attention in the Gospel of John, but the twelve get a lot of attention in the synoptics. And here we have Luke talking about the sending of the apostles. They were called as disciples, but they're sent as apostles. Um, the language here we have to translate into the present moment. The emphasis is that it's a vocation into which they are sent. They are sent in the power of Jesus Christ. They're sent with the gift of the Spirit. And therefore, no remuneration, no money, no worldly things can begin to compensate them for the vocation into which they are sent. That's the emphasis in this gospel. No walking stick, no bag, no extra tunic. It's meant to be a graphic explanation of the fact that you are sent in the power of the Spirit and no compensation can begin to um, measure up to the energy and the focus you have in your vocation. In the present day, uh, how to translate this into the present day, this image came to my mind. I visit a lot of elderly, homebound people, and of course I dealt with Father Nile there for about 10 years while he was, you know, growing in his disability and his dementia. Caregivers would be one of the great examples of people who have a vocation. Those who care for the elderly and those who are infirm, I, I, I compliment them all the time and I bless them because there's no way they could be doing this for money. Even though they get paid very little, they could get other jobs paid equally as much. But there's something about the vocation of caring for people who are sick and infirm. I saw this with Father Nile at Silverado there for, for many years. Um, and most of those who are vocation-driven, caring for the sick and the elderly, are African-Americans or the Latinos, or they're from the Philippines. An extraordinary sense of compassion and generosity coming from this unique, unique vocation of caring for those who are infirm and those who are elderly, those who society will forget very easily. It's very easy to overlook people like that. But this, this sense of vocation, we'll find it in other places. I, um, you find it in the priesthood, not always, but you do find it in the priesthood, where um, no money could begin to compensate for a young man at 24 that says, I'm going to live a celibate life and I'm going to give up a family, and I'm going to go out and I'm going to preach the Word of God. That's, <laughs> you can't buy that. No, nothing will compensate. So these images of very special people in your life, you think about the people in your life, the people that care for you, the people that provide services for you, it's very easy to overlook them, but they're the ones that image what is spoken about in this Gospel reading, at least for me. It's very important not to overlook these special people, but to thank them because they are really sent in the power of Jesus Christ. They may not know that, but they're exercising what appears here in this gospel reading today. Caring for the sick, um, consoling the people, reassuring the people, giving some sense of security and care for those who are forgotten so easy to forget. And certainly, I have found today I'm giving a, a talk on, on the blessings and burdens of the golden years. Well, what we call the golden years, they're not always golden years, but, but you know, what we call the wisdom years. I'm giving a talk on that today. And I was thinking about um, when I'm going around visiting homebound persons, one of the most extraordinary and 
difficult thing to face is their sense of loneliness. There's a great loneliness. And uh, people who are forgotten, they're institutionalized, or they're even, even if they're at home, very frequently their children are so busy, they're off doing things, they're here, there, and just don't have much time. So a ministry to those who are sick, elderly, and homebound is an image of this gospel reading today. So think about that in your own life. Persons that you know that are dedicated into this vocation of caring. Um, I think they bring this gospel to life. Amen. We pause now for a moment of prayer. And we had the great ceremony of the ordination of the bishops yesterday, which was majestic, it was wonderful. It was long. I know, I know. I sat back at the back there, and I brought a book with me. So it was terrific, and I got to read. I got to read for two and a half hours. I mean, I've been to these ceremonies many times, and I'm part of it, I'm part of it, but I mean, a lot goes on that it just repeats itself, and... It's a great time, but we're very proud of Bishop Albert now, and um, this Sunday, I don't think he's going to come to every Mass. I invite him and say, you ought to go to every Mass to allow the people to bless you. But since I'm doing the 930, I'm going to invite him to come to the 930 Mass so that the community, I can bless him myself, and he can bless me, and the community can bless him. And... uh, So keep a special prayer for him in his new Episcopal ministry. Amen.